Hello everyone. Good evening. How are you all doing? I hope every one of you, which means all my students are doing super great and awesome. I hope, right? Okay, you have to do awesome because it's exam time and you have to rock all the exam which is coming by, right? And you all should be coming into your chats after the exam and tell me all your marks, which should be above 95. Okay, all good. So for those who don't know me, myself, Amir Basit, Master Teacher of JE Physics at Vidandu. You can call me Amir for anything and everything, but only for physics, right? Okay, so let's stick to our plan talk less and learn more right okay so here in this mcq series session what we are going to do we are going to learn such a simple topic which is atoms and nuclei though it is simple the probability of the question which is coming from this chapter is so more so we have to be so prepared so that we can answer any kind of question that is coming from this part right i hope you all are ready and excited for the session to start right okay Yes or no? Give me a yes or no? Yes? Okay, let's go for it. So before starting with the session, I just want to give you a small hint or a help you can tell for the upcoming exams. If you are having any doubt regarding any of the theory of uh, which means any of the chapter, which means uh, let it be a wave optics, let it be a ray optics, uh, atoms or EM waves, anything. You can come to Vedandu side by that particular cha uh, chapter, which means and how many you have to pay for it? You have to pay just 9 rupees. It's not 9k, it is not 900, not 90 also. It is just 9 rupees for a single chapter. How cheap it is, right? Okay, so Vedandu is always there to help you guys. And I'll also be there to help all of you with a smiling face, right? So try to give me all the answers with a smiling face in the chat box. So let's start our session. So what is said in the first question? If 13.6 electron volt energy is required to ionize the hydrogen atom. The energy to required to remove uh, an electron from n equal to 2. So first let us see what do you mean by this ionization or the energy required for ionization. So ionization energy means the total energy that we should be giving to the electron so that it can be taken away from the attraction power of nucleus. If I start drawing this on the board, it will be like this. Look, so here you have the nucleus. Okay, this is the first orbit and you have the electron over here. So if you want to take this away from it, how much you have to give? 13.6 which means this electron is bounded to the nucleus with an energy of how much minus 13.6 electron volt why minus because it has lost that much of energy to attain the stability now the problem is how much energy we have to supply for an electron at n is equal to 2 orbit it is equivalent to find out what is the energy of electron at n equal to 2 orbit, right? Okay, so what is the formula to find out the energy of the electron in the nth orbit? Energy of the electron in the nth orbit is equal to minus 13.6 divided by n square. So here it is 2 square, so n is equal to 2, so 2 square is 4. So this will be almost coming around as minus 3.4. So the energy of the electron in the hydrogen atom in the second orbit is equal to minus 3.4 electron volt. So how much energy we should be giving whatever the energy has lost by the electron to attain the stability. It is equal to minus 3.4 the energy that we should be supplying to the electron is equal to how much? Very simple as that 3.4 electron volt. Right? I hope you all are happy with the question and with the explanation. Yes? Okay. So let's go to the question which is waiting for us. Here it is. The half-life of a radioactive nucleus is 3 hours. Half-life means the time required for the radioactive elements to become half of it after disintegration, right? In 9 hours, okay, 9 hours includes how many half-life? First half-life will be in 3 hours. It will be again will become half of it in the next uh, 3 hours, which means 6 hours and then 9 hours, it will become half of it one more time right so three half lives are present in nine hours because the half life of the given element is three hours right okay so its activity will be reduced to a factor so can you tell me what is the formula for activity activity a is equal to formula give me a minute yes so activity a is equal to 
uh, which is dn divided by dt with a negative sign. So, this is equal to activity. Do you know what is the formula for this? That is equal to lambda times n. Whatever is the number of elements or the nucleus present at that particular moment of time. Right? So, think that initially a was equal to lambda times n naught where n naught is the current number of nucleus. Right? Okay. So, to find out the activity after a time of 9 hours, it will be equal to lambda times whatever is the number of nucleus after 9 hours. How will you find out the number of nucleus after 9 hours? After 3 hours, you know. After 3 hours, how much it is? After 3 hours, the number of nucleus will become how much? n divided by 2, right? Because 3 hours is the half life, which means the time required for the nucleus to become half of it. In 6 hours, how much it will be? In 6 hours, one more half life period we, we are having, right? In the 6 hours. So, it will become half of what we were having before. Half of what we were having before means n by 2 by 2. So, that is equal to n by 4, right? So, plus 3 hours, 6 hours, plus 3 hours. So, if you take an again a 3 hour, which is half life, it will become half of what was present now. What is present now? n by 4. So, in 9 hours, it will become n by 4 by 2 that is equal to n divided by 8, whatever was the initial number, right? So, lambda a dash is equal to lambda n divided by 8. Lambda n is the initial activity. So, a dash is equal to a divided by 8 right so it will become 1 by 8 times so we can go for option d right awesome kids i hope you all are understanding right okay in terms of Rydberg constant the wave number of the first balmer line is i hope everyone knows what is balmer series is balmer series contains all the spectral lines in the visible region right and when will it happen if the electron jump from any of the higher level orbit to n is equal to 2 to the second orbit if it is jumping the photons will be having an energy which is equivalent to that of the visible right okay so what is the formula for that particular thing the wave number 1 by lambda the wave number 1 by lambda is equal to in the case of balmer series is r into r into 1 by 2 square because it is coming to the second one minus 1 by n square right n can be any orbit which is greater than 2 right okay <coughs> they are asking the first balmer line first means it should be coming from 3 to 2 right that is the first possibility that can happen so n is equal to 3 so let's write it as such r into 1 by 2 square is 1 by 4 1 by n is 3 3 square is 9 so how much it will be r into 9 by 4 is 9 minus 4 is 5 9 into 4 is 36 so 1 by lambda which is called as a wave number is having a value of 5r divided by 36 in terms of Rydberg constant which is r <coughs> right so which option we can go for we can go for the option c just like that without any confusions next <coughs> it's a small question so in the disintegration so some disintegration is happening which means uh, decay is happening so what you can see uranium 90 to 238 was there initially it will be undergoing alpha decay then it is undergoing beta minus decay and it is forming the final element y right okay so they are asking the atomic number and the mass number of the final uh, element formed which is called as y right okay so let's write it let's start from the beginning itself so uranium 90 to 38 if it undergoes alpha decay which means one alpha particle or one helium 2 plus is being removed helium 2 plus contains what two protons or uh, and two neutrons okay which means if two neutrons uh, two protons go the mass number will be decreasing by two so here it will be 92 give me one minute so if alpha decay happen 92 minus 2 and the mass number as two protons and two neutrons are going here how much it will be 238 minus 4 right okay so this will be 234 this will be 90 so that will be the atomic number and mass number of the element x now from here beta negative or beta minus decay is happening so the first thing that you should be remembering about the beta minus decay is in beta decay mass number will never change so whatever was the mass number before which was 234 yes okay so y will also be having 234 
So oh, here I can write it as 234. What about Z? What will happen to an atomic number if it is beta minus dk? Learn from now itself. Okay, if it is beta minus dk, the atomic number will increases by 1. What did I say? If it is beta minus, it will increase. So what will happen if it is beta plus? Opposite will happen, right? Plus then the atomic number will decreases by 1. As it is beta minus dk, the atomic number increases by 1. Here it was 90, so it will increases by 1 to what? 91. So, which option we can go for? As it is already seen, it, uh, we can go for the option D, which is 91, 234. Right? Very good. Yes. The transition of electron from 4, 5, 6 to n is equal to 3. If it was n is equal to 2, according to the question which we have discussed previously, it is corresponding to Balmer series, right? So if it is n is equal to 3, it will be of lesser energy, which means it will be in which range? It will be in the infrared region or you can say that if it is 2, 3, it is specifically passion series, right? I hope everyone have by hearted that. So this is a transition corresponding to which series of spectral lines? Passion series. All good. Next. <clears throat> consider alpha particles and beta particles gamma rays each having energy of 0.5 million electron volt which means all are having the same energy right okay in the increasing order of penetrating power the radiations are respectively so for understanding this or giving the answer first you should be knowing what is penetrating power how many of you know what is penetrating power penetrating power means the ability of any body which means a particle or a wave to pass through another body just like that okay you might have uh, heard about x-ray so you know that the x-ray will pass through our body and it will be coming out of the body though it is not able to pass through the bones right so that's how we are able to get the x-ray diagrams which you have seen when you go to hospitals and all right okay so the penetrating power means the ability of the rays or uh, the uh, particles to pass through a body right so among this gamma alpha and beta can you tell me which has more ability to pass through it the one which is lighter right the one which is having lesser mass will be able to just penetrate right that's why we have the pointed objects for bullets and all for guns right okay so in that case whichever is having lesser mass can easily penetrate so among this alpha beta and gamma rays which is having the lesser mass or which one is a wave at least gamma right gamma is a wave not a particle at least from alpha and beta so gamma will be having the higher power okay and among alpha and beta which will will be having higher it will be beta only because alpha is a helium 2 plus particle right and beta means it is positron uh, neutron it will be very small amount of particle when you com compare with a helium nucleus so among alpha beta and gamma the one which is having least amount of penetrating power is alpha then comes beta and the more penetrating power is for gamma so what is the order in the increasing order that is starting from the least alpha beta and gamma so we have the first option itself as our answer good okay seventh question the diagram shows the energy level for an electron in a certain atom right okay so what transition shown represent the emission of a photon with the most energy so emission of the photon when will the emission of photon happen whenever an electron jumps from a higher energy state to a lower which means from a higher energy state to a lower energy state energy will be emitted right so but in the first case you can see that the electron is moving from a lower energy state to higher energy state energy is being absorbed so that is not our case okay next we have this two three and four can you tell me among this which one will be having a greater emission okay now one thing that you must be knowing for answering this is the energy of the photon which is emitted is equal to the energy difference between the orbits right okay so it is energy difference between the orbits right why because an electron is losing some energy if it want to jump from a higher energy state to lower energy state so that lost energy will be equal to the energy difference between the states okay so now you want to think where is a higher energy difference between the orbits that is always between what it is always between first and two because the difference between the energy states 
will decreases if you move away from the nucleus let's take the example of hydrogen itself okay can you tell me what is the energy of orbit uh, of hydrogen or first orbit of hydrogen atom it is negative of where is it it is negative of give me a minute negative of 13.6 right second orbit minus 13.6 divided by 2 square because energy by n square so 2 square it is minus 3.4 right and here it is coming as minus 1.5 13.6 divided by 3 square 9 so can you where can you find a greater energy change so it is between first and the second orbit right so the photon emitted will be maximum also whenever an electron make a transition from the second orbit to first orbit because the energy difference between the orbit is greater at that particular case good happy yes if you all are happy give me a smile in the chat box right okay now the equation is there what is it four hydrogen atoms are combining to form a helium two electrons are also some energies also being uh, emitted out so what does this uh, phenomenon corresponds to four hydrogen are added up to form helium which is having a higher binding energy per nucleon right so what is this binding of nucleus is called as fusion right and the splitting of a large nucleus to form two lighter nucleus is called as fission so here it is com combination so this corresponds to fusion okay now this is a direct question the decay constant of a radioactive substance is lambda its half-life and mean life respectively which means the direct question what is the formula for half-life log ln2 divided by lambda and what is the formula for mean life 1 by lambda i hope everyone knows so we have the option b right simple as that now the ratio between the bohr's radius which means what is the ratio of radiuses of the first orbit second orbit third orbit and it goes on right okay i hope everyone knows this particular thing the radius of the orbit or the radius of the nth orbit r is equal to r naught which is called as a bohr's orbit into n square right which means the radius of the first orbit will be equal to n is equal to 1 r naught right radius of the second orbit will be equal to 2 square that is 4 r naught radius of the third orbit will be equal to 3 square that is 9 r naught it goes on so this is the ratio which is 1 is to 4 is to 9 is the ratio which is option c guys i hope you are happy with the question and the mcq series i hope you have learned something over here right which means it's a great thing and if you are having any difficulty in the theoretical question what you want to do is uh go to the youtube type my name and the chapter name whichever theory you are feeling difficult with okay you will get my lectures including the previous year question also that is a great thing uh, because discussing previous year question itself will give you a large idea about the question which is going to come right now comes the best part for what i did guys i hope you understood and the class was a good and the content was also good and you were able to grab something so if it is so don't forget to hit the like button and if you think that your friends is also get gonna get benefited with it please share it with your friends and there comes a last part right okay so about the subscribe button this is a button where we both are getting uh, benefited just like i say all the time how if you hit the subscribe button i'll get to know that uh, you all are interested and you all have understood and it will keep me excited and motivated to do more and more videos for you and the coming generations right and how is it going to benefit you once you hit the subscribe button you'll get the notification from the je channel whenever uh, required videos are coming whenever beautiful awesome videos are coming where you can get a lot much of knowledge apply it in your answer sheets and get the maximum of your plus twos right so don't forget to do that hit the subscribe button and make your life awesome with vidandu right so see you guys till we meet next time take care and bye bye